What is up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Hearthstone Deck Techs. This is a live episode. Today we are doing maths. Not really maths. Not really maths. I lied. We are going to do some statistical analysis of cards using data to help figure out what we should play, why we should play it, whether or not these things are doing good, etc., etc. That's that's what that's what we're going to do. Okay, um, so I'm gonna get right into it. I'm gonna pop up my web, my browser, so you can see what we're doing here. Um, actually, first, before we do that, um, I just watched a video by Asmodeus, and that guy hit legend from rank five, playing 100% Mechathun Priest. And I have been a big advocate of that deck for a long time because, as a priest player, as a premier priest player in my eyes, I feel like. Uh, the archetype really does things very well. Um, it finds a win condition very early versus the control -y type of decks, and it has all the tools to kind of fight aggro, and it's actually really well positioned in the meta. Its biggest weakness is that there are two decks that destroy it, right? One of them being um, uh, Secret Mage because of the ability to win the game and forcing you uh, no way to play around the secrets at the end um as well as um uh warlocks that play demonic project right but aside from that the, the deck is pretty good it's very good actually and it's low win rate on hs replay doesn't uh reflect how strong the deck is i think i think but let's change here and there right and for one thing um like there are flex spots that are different between my my list and Asmodeus's list, so we're going to use some statistical analysis and data comparison to decide whether or not my cards actually work better based on empirical evidence or not. And then I'm going to change the the cards depending. So let me tell you the two cards, okay? So I run Doomsayers and I run Loot Hoarders. The reason why I won Doomsayers is because I just want more anti-aggro cards. I want cards that can just kill Tempo for a turn. So dropping Doomsayer on 2, Doomsayer on 3, this is very good, especially versus decks like Odd Rogue. You kind of shut them down, you shut down their power turn, you prevent them from playing Hench Clan Thug. Versus Zoo, if you get this out soon enough, then this might s set them back a turn or two. It's nice. It's nice. Um, uh, Asmodeus runs Radiant Elemental, okay, and you know he has his own reasons for running Radiant Elemental. I used to run Radiant Elemental. I just found that Radiant Elemental, in my opinion, is the weakest performing card for me. I don't want the mana discount. Uh, you know, uh, the two three body is subpar. It's not that great. Uh, the card's always been like a, it doesn't do enough. But you know, I don't know. The other difference here is Loot Hoarder. So I run Loot Hoarder, and uh, Asmodeus runs Novice Engineer. And I know why he runs Novice Engineer. Because sometimes you want a top deck, so you want the draw effect there. You know, you need to find an answer. You have nine mana, you're looking for uh, Psychic Scream. Novice Engineer draws you the card. Loot Hoarder, you kind of have to wait for it to trade out. Right? So I see that difference. Um, the other thing is Loot Hoarder... Now, the pros of Loot Hoarder are that Loot Hoarder does one more damage... And I can hold Loot Hoarder in my hand for the combo turn and go off even with Loot Hoarder in my hand. Um, or if I want to, like, you, you know, my combo turn can have more cards in hand and, and still go off because Loot Hoarder, uh, it'll be free to play. Now, that's a significant point, selling point for Loot Hoarder. Um, but all the evidence I've told you right now are just pros and cons of me playing the deck. Empirically, or based on actual factual evidence, though, um, I don't know. So I'm going to show you how we're going to go through that today. And shout-outs to my boy, Sipui, one of the best players in the, in the, in the world, in both uh, Wild and Standard, who uh, kind of helped me with uh, uh, teaching me how I can use... Uh, Sites like HS Replay to develop this and figure this out. So here we are at HS Replay, as you can see. Um, I have a premium account, right? You pay some money for the things you like, right? And I'm going to go to decks, all right? 
and we will go to priest and let's set the filter actually let's just do an entire filter for now um, and then we'll go to Mechathune Priest. That's what we're going to play. 290,000 games. That's a huge uh, uh, sample size, right? And let's look at cards. Okay, so this is running double healing. <coughs> Pretty similar. I mean, except I'm running Doomsayer. He's running something else here. All right, I'm running Doomsayer. He's running Radiant Elemental. I'm running Loot Heal Order. So that's the same. But outside of that, the outside of that the deck is pretty similar but this sample size covers even crappy play <clears throat> and i don't want crappy play i only want what i would consider pretty decent play so uh i'll do the last 30 days and let's do uh legend to five okay so it's a much smaller sample size and here we got a deck that has 63 thousand games that's a lot that's a huge sample size let's see if we can go smaller last seven days nine thousand that's a pretty good sample size now what do we do if we go to three days okay there's only one one deck so let's i guess let's do let's do last 30 days okay all right see here we're gonna look at mechathune this is the list this is this is just a standard list okay um so i can decipher a couple things here right First, if I go to keep, I'll find out what cards people always keep in their mulligan, right? Here's Cleric and here's Hemet, 90% um, Loot Hoarders, 90%. These are pretty good. Um, Acolyte Pain up there. But let's switch it by mulligan win rate. So mulligan win rate says these are cards that show up in your mulligan that people win with on the game, okay? So the... The higher the mulligan win rate percentage is, the more likely you're going to win if you have that card in your opening hand. Yo, Lazy Wizard, what's up? We're doing some uh, uh, analysis here. So I hope, uh, I hope this is interesting for you. Check it out. Um, okay, let me fix my... Shit. Shit. What, where did it go? All right, there. Let me make the page a little smaller so I can see what you guys are saying in this chat. Okay, there we go. This is, that should be good enough. Boom. All right. Um, so when we sort it by mulligan win rate, we see the best performing card from top to bottom, right? Best performing mean meaning that if I have this in my mulligan, I'm going to win the game. That's how likely I am to win the game. So in general, Hemet wins you the game. And in my practice, Hemet's has always been the most important card in the deck. You drop Hemet on turn six, you just got to stall for three turns, seven, eight, and nine, to uh, to win the game, right? Um, and you can see right here, you can sort it by opponent. So versus Druid, you would expect Hemet to be up there as well, obviously. Uh, versus some classes, that might not be the case, like Odd Rogue. Oh, well, it is. Anyway, whatever, simple, um, but we're looking at a very particular list right here, right? We're looking at a game, a list that has 60,000 played, but we want to see the list of all the tech choices, right? This deck shows Loot Hoarder and uh, Radiant Elemental, but I also want to see what happens if people play Doomsayer or if they play Novice Engineer, right? Which is what uh, Asmodeus plays. So I'm going to go to meta, right? Which will explain the meta of the the current meta for whatever server, right? I'm going to pick Americas, right? Because that's what the server I play in. Actually, I will pick all regions because I just want to know how well people are playing the deck. And I will pick ranks 1 through 5, and I'll pick Legend. And we'll do uh, latest expansion. Uh, maybe we do last 7 days. Um, okay, we'll go by class. And let's go find our deck. Where's our deck? Mechathune Priest. And we want Mechathune Priest, not Quest Priest. Okay, so we got 20,000 games. That's a pretty good sample size. But let's see how that changes with more time, right? So if we do it by latest expansion, we get 200,000 games. 200, that's a lot of games. That's a great sample size. Um... That might be too big of a sample size. I I, I want I would like to think that people would 
uh, modify the deck more in a more recent time. So we're going to go with last seven days, which I feel is pretty pretty fair, right? And Mechathune Priest, 20,000 games, that's good enough. That's a lot of games. All right, so here's the over 500,000 games. That's its win rate? What? Okay. Um, worst matchup, Tempo Mage. I told you guys, right? What did I say? I said the worst matchups were Tempo Mage and uh, Warlocks that run Demonic Project. Um, and you see here we have two, two deck lists that we'll look at. Okay, but before we do that, um, let's see the overview of cards that people play. Now let's look at a mulligan guide. Now this mulligan guide shows you way more than just one deck. Because you can see here there's got Doomsayers, Loot Hoarders, Novice Engineers. There's a bunch of cards. Topsy Turvy, Awaken the Makers, there's Quests. So now by using this full sample size of information... All right, let me see what this looks like for you guys. Okay, uh, let me move this thing a bit over here. Does that fix it for you guys? Uh, ah, fuck it. You can still see, right? You guys see what I'm talking about. Uh, okay, so now that we see all this information, I can decipher how I decide what cards I want to choose. And remember what I'm trying to do here. I already have Mecha Doom Priest. I have a list. But Asmodeus plays... no. Um, he plays Radiant Elemental instead of Doomsayer, and he plays Novice Engineer, uh, or Novice Inventor, whatever it's called, instead of Loot Hoarder. And I want to decide, am I right in playing the cards that I play, or does he know something more than me about uh, the card choice here? Like, what is the better performing card? In my mind, the cards I'm playing are performing better, because based on my experience, they do better. But empirically based on statistics on data is that true right so so here we're gonna look we're gonna set it by mulligan win rate okay and like i said mulligan win rate uh tells you how good these cards are when they're actually drawn in the opening hand right so i'm gonna scroll down And so we're going to remember the cards. We're talking about Loot Hoarder, Novice Engineer, Doomsayer, and uh, what's the card? Loot Hoarder, Novice Engineer, Doomsayer, Radiant Elemental. Okay. So here's Radiant Elemental. It's at the top 50.6% win rate. Uh, Loot Hoarder is right here at 50.3% win rate. So 0.3 of a percent lower, right? And then we got Novice Engineer at 49.4% of, of the win rate. And then we have Doomsayer at the bottom, 48.1% win rate. Okay. So this kind of tells me two things. Okay. First of all, now we know that Doomsayer is the worst card. It's 48% win rate. Oh, oh, my man, don't worry about it. Head out to work. You can rec I'm going to put this video up on my YouTube so you can check that out there. Um, or you can always watch the VOD or, you know, just hit me up anytime and we can discuss it more. Okay. But uh, have fun, man. Drive carefully. I will, man, for sure. So here we see the Doomsayer is obviously the worst performing card out of the four cards I talked about. Right. It has a 48.1% win weight when, when drawn in the mulligan. Right. Um, Wait, is that deceptive? That's right, right? Oh, no. Should I set it by drawn win rate? Actually, shit, I'm sorry. We should set it by drawn win rate. I'm sorry. I don't know why I set up it by mulligan win rate. So let's go back. Let's look at those cards based on drawn win rate. Uh, Novice Engineer, actually pretty high. Radiant Elemental, Loot Hoarder, and Doomsayer, all right together. All right together. So not... Novice Engineer has got a drawn win rate of 51.2%. And these three cards are all up at 49%. Loot Hoarder is at 50%. So, man. So, basically, Radiant Elemental, Loot, these are all, they're all about the same value. The only card that is significantly higher, and this is 1.2% is significantly higher, is Novice Engineer. So, I definitely think I'll be playing Novice Engineer. The question is, are we going to play Radiant Elemental, Loot Hoarder, or Doomsayer? Now, it looks like Doomsayer is just slight, slightly lower in its performance. 
and also if I look at the mulligan win rate, it's also actually lower as well. So I might go with Loot Hoarder over Radiant Elemental. Loot Hoarder just allows us to get more of the deck, okay? So Radiant Elemental, when you think about it, what does Radiant Elemental do? It gives you a 2-3 body on board that gives you tempo if you have a spell. So on turn 3, you can play Radiant Elemental and Shadow Visions to find Psychic Stream. On turn 2, you can play Radiant Elemental, Shadow Visions to put Power Word Shield. Or just, you know, Radiant Elemental into Power Word Shield, right? Um... But is that that much better than just playing a loot hoarder and seeing another card? Like, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking about when I use the deck, how often I'm able to use multiple manas because I had a Radiant Elemental. Like, and it's not that great, to be honest, because most of the times my spells are like Spirit Lash or um, Silence. You know, they're already cheap and affordable. Hey, what's up, Aldwin? Uh, so they don't really make that big of a difference to me the mana discount it's not that big of a deal you know like you know like a binding hill spirit lash like what other spells psychic scream like i don't want to play radium elemental to make my psychic scream six mana and then psychic scream that that doesn't seem worth it so using the stats i'm going to be like well okay doomsayer is the worst performing card by very slight a very slight margin um, and But Novice Engineer is such a good performing card that I'm going to make the change there, right? So here's my list. Um, and let me fix this for you guys. So we go back to my list, live scene. There you go. So here's my list. Doomsayer, the worst performing card out of those particular cards. Loot Hoarder is pretty good, so I'll keep Loot, loot Hoarder. And we're saying Novice Engineer is the best performing of those four cards. So here we go. We add two Novice Engineers. Right, boom. Deck to me is pretty optimized. Right now, another question is silence versus circle of healing. Um, which which one of these cards performs better when drawn? Right, so we're gonna go look at that. All right, so let me go back. Let me pop this up for you. Okay, oops. Uh, okay, drawn win rate. Like which card performs better when it's drawn? And we're looking at silence, and silence is right up here. And it's at uh, 51%. And then we're going to go look for a Circle of Healing. So whenever you see Circle of Healing... Circle of Healing down here. And that is at 49.1%. Which is not... Well, which is 2% lower. So it's, I would say that's significantly worse. Okay? So, you know, we're going to run two Psychic... We're going to run two Silences and one Psychic uh, Scream. Now let's do this with another deck, okay? Um... Let's go to Togwoggle Druid, which is a deck that I'm going to get into a game with right now. I've been playing... This month, I'm only playing this deck for Standard, at least on the ladder. Like, un until I hit Legend with the deck, um, I won't be playing any other deck this month. I just want to get a full uh, sample size of stats for the deck, right? So, here we go. Here's my... Uh, this is the list I've been playing. I think I'm pretty set on this list. I thought about it for a while. Now, you'll see interesting cards here. Mind Control Tech, Innervate, Giggling Inventor. Those are the cards that um, are probably interchangeable. Like, you, you don't have to play those cards. Those are flex spots, right? Uh, Giggling Inventor, uh, Innervate, Mind Control Tech. So I'm going to go look at the meta again, and we're going to go find uh, the deck, right? So let's go back to Rank, Legend. Let's go last three days, okay? And all regions and by, what is this deck? This is Mill Druid. Okay, so here's Mill Druid. Okay, uh, I get Legend of Five, right? Okay, time frame, last seven days. I guess you can't do it by the last three days. Okay, well, whatever. Last seven days, um, Mulligan Guide. Boom, so now this shows everything. Obviously, I can only put 30 cards in the deck not all of them so we're going to look at the drawn win rate one more time to see which card does better when drawn right so here's mind control tech right at the top 58 percent innervate right at the top 57 percent okay giggling inventor right here 56.9 percent not bad um now let's think about the other cards that players would play to 
to put in there, right? Like other cards that are played in Druid decks that I'm not playing. Oaken Summons, Starfall, Blood Mage Thalnos. So Oaken Summons is right up here. And it's at 56%, which is, is about a 0.5 of a percentage less um, versus Innervate. And it's 2% less than Mind Control Tech. But here's the thing. Oaken Summons come, comes as a package. You only play Oaken Summons if you play Ironwood Golem. And you'll see Ironwood Golem is down here. So you'd actually take that percentage average of two cards and then compare it. But we're not going to do that. That's just obviously I'm already not playing that. But let's look for Starfall. And Starfall is down here at 55%, which is 3% lower. So to me, it's not ideal. Blood Mean Thanos is up at 55% as well. So it's just they're just underperforming. They're not as good as what I already have in the list. Giggling Inventor is pretty good, but we're already running Innervate and double Mind Control Tech. So I think we're Gucci. So boom, there we use some stats. We use some stats to optimize the deck that we're going to play, right? And now don't be fooled, guys. Just because I optimized it however I thought we were going to optimize the deck doesn't mean that I'm miraculously going to win every game. You know, I'm not, I'm not all of a sudden became, I didn't all of a sudden become the best Hearthstone freaking player and I'm going to win every match, okay? That's, uh, that's not how that works, okay? But uh, let's go jump into a match. And I'll show you a couple more things that we can use this data for. And shout-outs to SippyWee, who was really integral into teaching me and developing this, okay? So we're going to play Togwoggle. So I'm going to go back to this list here, right? And we're going to go to decks. We're going to search for Togwoggle. Right, Mill Druid. And we're going to set it to Legend of Five. Let's do the last seven days. Let's do the last three days. Sorted by games. Let's do the last seven days. Yeah, we're going to pick... Uh, I'm going to pick a list. All right. So I'm thinking about the mulligan, and I'm challenging a rogue. So I'll just go here, and I'll set it to rogue, opponent as rogue. And then I'll click on mulligan win rate. So now I know what the best performing cards are, or the cards that people mulligan for the most. Um, wild growth, nourish, ferocious howl. So that is going to be what I'm going to mulligan for. Okay. So go back to this. Mind control tech is not going to be that great in this matchup because they're not going to go super wide. None of those other cards really develop what I want. So let's hope that we get ramp. There you go. Wild growth. That's nice. So I already know turn two. Is it odd rogue? It's odd rogue. Aggressive deck. All right. So uh, we're going to go turn two. Wild growth. Turn three. Maybe play Flabillion's Flute right on the empty board. I'm not sure yet. We'll see. We got a Nourish. So there's a turn. So now, we haven't even really done anything. And we already determined what we're going to do for the next few turns. Which is kind of good, right? This is important. So I already know next turn, I'm going to use my mana efficiently. On, uh, unless I draw a 4-drop, okay? Or or a Ferocious Howl. So I'm very likely going to play Flippidinous Flute. Because it'll put a body on board. 3-4 body. Which is not great. But it's not bad. And then I'll follow up that turn by playing Nourish and the Arcane Tyrant, right? Now, I just have to decide, what am I going to do? Am I going to use the Nourish to draw or I'm going to use it for ramp? And we'll let the next two turns dictate what we decide, okay? But I already have a plan, and that's important. And with this deck, this is not a... The great thing about Togwoggle is that there's so many routes. Okay, so now we have a different situation. I could, I could have played the Floop, but instead I'm going to play the Weapon, because the Weapon kind of puts pressure in a sense that um, I will be able to get to 10 mana quicker, so now I have two routes to get to the mana, okay, interesting, okay, we got two Nourishes, so we can use for one for draw, and one, or we can use one for ramp, and the second for draw if we need to. So, ramp is more important now, okay? So, we're going to use that. 
Let's get buff here. Hit this guy. Boom. Put a 4-4 on board. Do we go with more tempo? I think so. This matchup is all about tempo. More threats on the board. Okay. So we do that. Now it's very likely that we use the nourish for draw. Okay. This is not a matchup where we're going to kill the opponent by stealing his deck. Okay. So I'm not playing for the combo. In here, I'm just playing to do some crazy stuff. Go hella wide. That's the plan. We don't have the greatest hand. Like, we had a good opening, but we still need to draw into big stuff. UI, right? That's what we want to see. An ultimate infestation. That's what we want to see. That's how this Druid deck wins games, guys. Either I play the Togwoggle combo, or I just do crazy broken Druid shit. And crazy broken Druid shit is UI, right? So. Void Whipper trade. Great. Okay. UI, bro. We drew a UI. Okay, so let's think about this. If I use the Nourish for cards, right? That means I will have one, two, three, four, five cards in hand. Next turn, I will have a sixth card in hand. So if I play the UI, there's a chance I may overdraw because of it. But, I mean, I also have a good chance of getting Arcane Tyrant and an Innervate. Those are two cards that are playable on the turn. But if I use the this for ramp right now, I'll be able to play UI next turn. And the sooner I play UI, the better it is. Okay? So we're just going to do it. We're just going to attack the face, man. It's a weak turn. That's a weak turn. But at least our next turn is going to be a power, power turn. Okay? So... Big turn. It's a big turn. That's power, man. He brought us to half life. Huge turn. Ooh, not the greatest. So he's actually got a lot of damage available to him. So we're not in the clear yet. Actually, we're not even close to being in the clear. But if we can survive a turn, then we can maybe turn things around here. Because we have, we have health. We have removal. We have some big creatures. We got value. We got card advantage. This might turn out okay. Oh, man. Go wide, bro. Go wide. Go wide. Oh. Oh, he doesn't know. He didn't know. Guys, he didn't know. He didn't know. Okay, well, I mean, there's multiple ways I can approach this turn. I have a lot of removal in hand, though. And I have a mind control tech. And right now, I want to use this. Actually, this is a power, power turn. So we're actually going to do some really broken shit right here, okay? So here's six. Let's play this. Let's hit face. Give me that 10 mana. Let's take a creature. Boom. We got a weak one. Sucky. Sucky thing to get, right? But we got damage. OD, dude. Tempo. Tempo. It's so crazy. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Hunter. Oh, no, no, no. We're not playing no Hunter today, bro. Watch and learn. Yeah, we're watching and learn. Alright, let's go. Let's go at it again. 
if you're tuning in, I hope that the uh, beginning part was informational and educational to some extent. You know, I, I appreciate Give me comments, let me know. As always, follow me on all my social media or on my YouTube or my Twitch or whatever.